So guys, here we are. It's number six in the series, helping you master part two of the IELTS speaking test. This is Keith, and I've been trying to give you a framework approach to give you language templates and structures to help you with part two, right? Now, I put all of the part two questions into categories. And so far in this series, we have looked at people, places, events, activities. Today, we're going to look at things. So hi, if you don't know me, my name is Keith. I'm from IELTS Speaking Success and here to help you really build skills and confidence for your IELTS speaking test. The focus of, of this video is all about part two of the test, one of the most difficult parts of the test, because that's where you either crumble and fall and lose your confidence, or you can do really well and lead into a great part three. So to help you <clears throat> I'm looking at some structures and language. We'll be looking at some ideas for all of the recent questions in the category of things. So let's have a look at what those questions are. So recently we've had, describe something you borrowed, which was useful. I borrow things all the time. I borrow sugar from my neighbor, money from my wife. <laughs> Describe your favourite item of clothing. Maybe it's your new jacket or your new t-shirt. Mm. Describe a movie you recently saw. Lots of movies ca have come out recently. Um, describe a photograph in your home. So that's not a photograph, is it? It's a painting. But you will have, I'm sure, lots of photographs maybe of your children or your friends, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Describe a toy you had as a child. Now, that's tough. A toy you had as a child. Is it dolls? Is it a bicycle? Mm, there's lots of things to talk about. So these are some recent questions. Let me just um, pick out a few and talk through some ideas you may have. Okay. So describing something that you borrowed, which was useful. Well, I guess we often borrow money, right, from people, whether it's five euros, five pounds, whatever your currency, or you borrow money from the bank. You wanted to get a car loan or a mortgage for your house. All of that is borrowing money. It's useful. Um, books, of course, maybe you borrow books from your friend, you borrow books from the library, of course. Tools like these things, what do you call those? Ah, that thing to put something, that thing to repair the plug or to screw in something. It's called a screwdriver. Um, so tools you may borrow. They're useful because they help you mend things or repair things. Bicycle. Did you borrow your friend's bicycle because your bicycle was broken? Sometimes I borrow clothes. In fact, whenever I go to visit my brother or my dad, I often borrow their clothes. And a phone. Now, that's interesting because you don't borrow a phone for a long time, but you may be with somebody and you need to call a friend, but your phone's out of battery. Oh, can I just borrow your phone and I'll just call my friend? Oh, I'll just borrow your phone and call my wife. Let her know I'll be late for dinner. So maybe you borrow the phone, even for one phone call, right? That's useful. Nice ideas. What about clothing? Well, very often, your favourite clothing comes from a special event, like a wedding or a christening, or maybe it was, a, I don't know, unfortunately, maybe a funeral and you have to buy the black tie. But the event, that's probably not going to be your favourite item of clothing. Forget that idea. But the wedding dress or the suit, those may often be your favourite items, Um Amazing, right? My wife still has her wedding dress. And I've still got my wedding suit. 
And here's the funny thing. I can't wear it because I've got fatter and bigger. But when I went to throw it out, she refused. And she stopped me and said, you can't throw that out. It's your wedding suit. And I thought, well, I need more space in the wardrobe. But no, it had to stay. It stayed. It's in the wardrobe. I never wear it. But it's there. Other things, maybe comfortable clothes, right? Jeans, favorite clothing. Oh, there's a part one question about jeans. Hmm, so maybe your jeans, because they're comfortable, favorite clothing, or a sweatshirt or a hoodie like this one. Um, lots of people get a hoodie from their, a hoodie, a hoodie from their university with the name on, right? To show off or remember where they've studied. Maybe your favorite shoes or a nice leather jacket. If you've ever invested in a leather jacket, like I did when I was 22, I kept it for years. I wore it all the time. It was just every single day because I loved it. So maybe your leather jacket is something that you wear. Or maybe your hat. I've got a lot of hats. I've got a flat cap. I've got a woolly hat. I've got a sun cap. Um, all sorts of hats. Some of them are my favourites. Sometimes I've got one because it's a souvenir when we went to the um, the aquarium in Hong Kong and it's got the name on the top of the hat and I wear that quite a lot because it reminds me of that holiday. So, you know, those souvenirs, clothes as souvenirs, especially the t-shirt, right? Then those might be nice items of clothing to talk about. Now, describing a toy, look at this guy, <laughs> the Hulk. Um, that's not my favourite clothing, by the way, the nice little shorts. No, this is a toy. So maybe you want to talk about... Um, now, this is not a doll, because we tend to use doll for girls' dolls, and boys tend to talk about action figures. So this is an action figure. The Hulk is an action figure. Why is that, right? I mean, don't dolls do action? In fact, lots of dolls do, right? They cry, they move. Gosh, some of them even poo, apparently. And they do action. But no, for boys, it's an action figure. Um, and so this is an action figure. But maybe you have a cuddly toy, like the cuddly teddy bear or the cuddly dog. Lots of people like those. Lego is the big international game for building blocks. Board games might be a toy you had. You know, maybe that was Monopoly, Cluedo, or whatever board games you had when you grew up. Toy cars for boys and girls. And, of course, the classic puzzles. Or in England, we tend to call them jigsaws, where you put the pieces together to make a picture. And then you find out that one piece is missing out of 1,000, at the very end, there's one piece missing because it fell down the back of the sofa. How frustrating is that? Anyway, these are toys you could describe. So there's just a few ideas, um, some food for thought to get you thinking. Now, let's look at structure. So I think when you're talking about things, whatever it is, you probably can talk about how you got it. You can describe it, what it looks like, and why it's important. How you feel about it, IELTS Part 2 always asks. And how do you feel about it? And explain how you felt about it. So why it's important and that feeling, um, emotive language is really useful. So let's break this down a bit, how you got it. Let's have a look at some language, okay? So how you get things, well, sometimes you find them. You find them in a shop, you find them online. But instead of I found it, what about I came across it? I came across this action figure in the second-hand shop. Or I came across this lovely jacket online. So it's a nice phrasal verb. I came across it in the supermarket online and then you buy it or I bought it I bought it in the shop hmm make it a bit more interesting I picked it up I picked it up in the charity shop or I picked it up 
at Toys R Us. I picked it up online. So I bought it. And as with most phrasal verbs, there's this connection, right? I picked it up. I picked it up. I picked it up. It's a chunk. And I do encourage students to think about chunks of language. Don't think so much about the four words, I picked it up. Just think of the sound. Picked it up. I picked it up. Practice. After paying your money, you then get it. You can say, I got it. It arrived in the post or I got it. I got my hands on it. It's literally the idea of holding it and feeling it. You know, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. I was so happy to finally get my hands on it. So that's some nice language. When I was, so for example, I came across it on the internet when I was looking for something else. So can you see we're building complex structures? So not only I came across it on the internet, when I was, so you're building an extra clause, when I was looking for something else. So think about that, building your structures, your sentences, to make them a bit longer. To, longer that you still, still feel comfortable with. Okay, don't feel you have to build big, big, long sentences and you're not comfortable and you can't speak like that. Just do what you're comfortable with first. These are just ideas, right? So maybe you find and buy something, but maybe it's a present. It was a gift. It was a present from Uncle John. It was a gift from Uncle Thomas, Auntie Teresa whoever. Um, colloquially, in England, we often say, I got it as a gift off Uncle Tom. It's a different way of saying it. It's a much more complex way of saying it, but you'd need to practice it, but it's nice, right? And again, it has that linking. I got it. I got it as a gift off someone. I got it as a gift off my brother. You can connect more if possible. I got it as a gift off my brother. I got it as a gift off my uncle. I got it as a gift off my brother. <gasps> That's a lot of connecting. Again, practice, but do what's comfortable with you and maybe smaller chunks at the beginning. I got it as a gift off my uncle. Work small steps first. Brilliant. Let's move on from how you got it to descriptions. So, wow, English is great, isn't it? Look at this. Not only can we say it's red, but if it's a kind of red, but not exactly red, we just say it's reddish. Well, it's bluish. It was a greenish colour. I've got this reddish cap or this bluish jacket. It's nice, eh? And it, I'm sure you have this in many languages, but I love this in English. It just gives you a very simple way of making the colour less clear. It's reddish. We can talk about shape. It's square shaped. It's round shaped. It's triangle shaped. Triangular shaped. It's pear shaped. Whatever it may be, your phone is kind of square shaped or is it rectangle shaped, rectangular shaped? There's many things you can say. It's pear shaped is great because when you say something went pear shaped, it's an idiomatic expression. It means it went badly wrong. Um, so imagine you go into your IELTS test and you're so nervous, you can't speak and you just don't say anything. Oh, the whole test went pear-shaped. It went badly wrong. It's a horrible example. That's not going to happen, right? It's not going to go pear-shaped. Follow me. It'll go Keith-shaped. Keep practicing. Okay. Now, nowadays, a lot of the things we describe, maybe it's a website, a phone, a computer, a tool, state-of-the-art means it's very modern 
uh, very <clears throat> state of the art, high technology, right? So it's a high tech phone. It's a state of the art building. It's a cutting edge computer. So cutting edge means with the latest technology. Finally, you may want to say it's unique. So there's only one of that kind. Um, so it's it's a unique cap. Maybe it was maybe your clothes were tailor made. So it was a unique shirt, um, one of a kind. There's only one of that. It was one of a kind. So feelings. Why is it important? So very often in English we might say it means a lot to me because it's important for me, right? It means a lot to me. So notice again the connecting. It means a lot. It means a lot. The two becomes t. It's a weak form. Lot t. A lot t. A lot to me. It means a lot to me because it was a present or because I got married in that jacket and suit that is still in my wardrobe taking up so much space. It has a lot of emotional value. So maybe it's not worth a lot of money, but it has that emotional value. So typically wedding dresses, right? They have emotional value or sentimental value. It has a lot of sentimental value. Again, maybe you like it or it's important because it's unique, one of a kind, like no other. That's nice. It's like no other. Totally different. And of course, you couldn't live without it. I couldn't live without my phone. I couldn't live without my cap. Well, I could, but not in the sun. If it's very sunny, I couldn't live without my cap because I burn very easily. I couldn't do without it. I couldn't do without it. It's the same meaning. It's really important. You have to have it. Magnificent. So let's move on. I'm going to give you a, an example here. And it's one that I think is quite hard. Describing a toy you had as a child. Okay. So here is a model answer. I will try and pull in and use and practice some of those um expressions that I have shown you so far. And let's see how I do. Okay. If you're sitting comfortably, I will describe a toy I had as a child. Okay. When I was a kid growing up, I didn't really have a lot of toys, but I do remember one that I was particularly fond of. And it was an action figure. It was a soldier. Now, I recall that I got that as a gift of one of my schoolmates. So my parents had organised a birthday party at home for me and everyone had come round to the house and in the middle of the party, we had the present giving bit. Um, I was so pleased to get my hands on it because I had always wanted one of these action figures. So, as I said, the toy was a toy soldier and it was called Action Man. No, don't say that in the test. It was called Action Man. It wasn't state of the art at all, actually. It was just a very simple plastic figure. Um, he had two different outfits so you could dress him up to fight in the jungle or to fight in the snow. <laughs> The, <laughs> the jungle outfit was basically a greenish top with black trousers and a camouflage jacket. Um, oh, yes. And he had a round shaped backpack and a rifle. Um, I probably only played with it for a few months, actually, but I kept it for years. It wasn't unique or valuable. So, right, many kids had an action man, but I think it had sentimental value for me. Um, it reminded me of that birthday party. And it was one of the best parties I'd ever had. 
that's it. So, describing a toy you had as a child, there's a model answer for you. I hope that the templates, the language, the structure of this video can help you. And listen, if you'd like to find out a lot more templates, examples and model answers with all the analysis, breaking down pronunciation, fluency, the vocabulary you can use, um, and different kinds of grammar, how you can be really clever with grammar to get a higher mark in IELTS speaking. Go and check out my online course, IELTS Speaking Part 2. Totally focused on Part 2. It's brilliant. Follow the link below. Go and check it out. If you're around a band 6, looking for a band 7 or above, that is the course for you. It'll give you confidence. I hope you enjoy it. This is the end of the series. Great, all six. Go back and watch them. Listen to the language. Practice, practice, practice. I look forward to seeing you with a new series of new ideas in the near future. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.